Percentile plots, or pizza plots as they're commonly known as because of the way they look, these are a great way to show how a player performs in different areas of stats compared to other players in the same position, be it in the same league or across the last 365 days of the year against the top five leagues and Champions League and other European competitions. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to simply create those for not only goalkeepers, outfield players, but also compare two players in the same position and customize what your actual plot will look like. So with that in mind, let's jump over to my R Studio. So the first thing you want to be able to do once you load up R is you want to be able to install DevTools because DevTools will then allow you to install the most up-to-date version of Well Football R, which is gonna be used for getting the data needed to be able to actually feed the plots. And then install GG Shake R, which is gonna allow you to create these plots with just a few lines of code, nice and simply, instead of building it all from scratch. This is a nice, quick and easy way of doing it. Now I already have these installed so I'm just going to just load in the library so we have these ready to use and then if you want to have a look at the documentation there are two parts of the site on the GG Shaker GitHub which shows you an example which is kind of similar to what I'm going to be going through here but then also breaking out what it means when you are building out the different parts of the actual pizza plot to give you the information and the color schemes of what you need. And as an example, all you have to do is put in plot underscore pizza. And then within there, you put in what your data is. And then you want to put in what the type is. And this can either be a single player or a comparison. So that's where that one goes in. Then you have your template. Now there's pre-selected stats that are used for outfield and then pre-selected stats that are used for the goalkeeper. These are sort of the norm which will be used in most sites or when people look at different parts for a goalkeeper or an outfield player. But if you wanted to tailor your own, that's where you can add in custom and then you have the three sections to be able to break out if something is possession something is attack and something is defense and then you can put in hex codes to be able to show a different color for each area and then for the comparison side of things this is where you can put in the player underscore one player underscore two we have to put the exact name that needs to be in there and then the actual color you want to do the comparison because it will come through all as one color for everything and then you have a white outline that will show you player two so if you did it as green player one will come through as green and then the outline of white will show for player two. And then you can pick the seasons for players one and players two, and then the actual season, which is the one you would use if you're doing single. And here in the example, it's showing the last 365 days of the men's big five leagues, UEFA Champions League and UEFA Europa League. So then what that basically is saying is for the last 365 days in that time, all the games that whatever player you selected will show up their data against all the other players. So say if you had a forward, all the other forward players across all five leagues and when they played in the Champions League and the Europa League, and then it will do the percentile of where they position in those different stats. And then the last part is just the theme. So that'd be whatever your background is. And that can be dark, black and white and default it's set to dark. So let's start looking at how we can pull through the Manchester United goalkeeper's stats for the last 365 days. And how you do this is what you're using is this little thing here is pulling the data, which is what you're gonna be using World Football R to do. And it's pulling through what is the scouting report from FB Ref website. So in here, all you have to do is find out from the actual website, what the URL is for that particular player. And then you do a comma and then you do position underscore versus equals either primary or secondary. And what that means is if a player is sort of a mixture, so say if we've got like a, a midfielder who plays midfield or attacking midfield, if you do primary and midfield is their primary, then the actual comparison of the percentile stats for that particular player will relate to them versus all other players who play in, in the midfield. If you did secondary, then that would focus on all players who are seen as attacking midfielders. And as this is a goalkeeper technically primary is all it's going to be but if you wanted to play around with that you can and how you find different players urls is you find it here under the fbref.com slash en slash players and then that will give you all the players which you can then go and look at and here's an example of what the player looks like just for the manchester united goalkeeper for now and then here's what it will look like when we run the actual pizza plot because this is what this actual site shows and this is where it's getting from the data and this is showing the last 365 days but like if you wanted to have a look at all players then all you have to do is type in the player here or if you're using that link that I showed it comes up like this and then you can just click on a player and then you got the information all you have to do is just highlight the URL copy it and then paste it in 
over the code in here. And then so if we run this now, we can see that's been run. And if we just open this up, we can start to see all the stats. So we can see the player's name, what their position is, what they're going to be compared against, what the stat group is, what the statistic is, what their average per 90 minutes is, what their percentile is. And then based on how many minutes they've actually played, because obviously there'll be instances where there will be players who might have a higher score, but it's because they've had less time. So that way you can kind of check how much it is. And then you've got the scouting period here is what we're going to be using. So it's going to be this information that we've got along here that's going to be being used. And then to actually do the pizza plot, all you have to do is whatever you've saved your data to. So in this case, I did AO underscore single underscore player as my main data. You want to feed that under plot underscore pizza and then your data equals whatever you've saved that player's data to and then you do a comma and then because we only want to look at his single results we don't want to do a comparison yet we do type equals single in quotation mark and because it's a goalkeeper we're using template goalkeeper for color underscore possession we're going to be using a green then color underscore attack is going to be a yellow and then color underscore defense is going to be a red and then the season like i said here this is the scouting period which you got this is what we're going to be looking at which is the last 365 days looking at the big five leagues in europe and then champions league and europa league as well and then we're doing theme dark so if we was just to save that particular run and then call it ao underscore pizza if we run this we'll then get a result so as you can see this is now created a pizza plot that then gives you all different areas so as you can see anything that is in possession is here anything that's counted as attack is here and anything that's counted as defense is here and this is what's been selected for what would be for a goalkeeper and then it's all compared to other goalkeepers which you should be able to see here but the, because it's white on a white background it's cutting off but that can be fixed when we export this later and yeah it's that simple just to be able to just get that information all you had to do was just pull the information from world football r and and then running using a function in GG Shaker then gives you that means to be able to just run this really, really quickly. And you can do the same with England. So if we go and um, we've I've already pulled this information already. If we was to run his, he's showing as outfield. So there's no difference here apart from the template here as goalkeeper. And this is outfield. So all we do is just run that. We see Hangman's actual pizza plot now. And this time it's forwards, but we can't see because it's getting a little bit cut off again. But again, it asks what it's looking at. So it's looking at across all five leagues. This is his performance. And you can see in the attacking side of things, he's very high up in the percentiles. And then also touches down there. And then anything that sort of progresses passes passing general sort of passing pass complete is so so but you can see like anything to do with defense is not really his main sort of focus but as expected he's a very forward forward he's not someone like a harry kane who would drop back so if we were to say look at harry kane we can do that as well again all you have to do is just do the same thing find his url add it in using exactly the same code again because all you're using is here and it's an outfield player as well and it's single and then we can see harry kane over the last 365 days and how he looks and he's slightly lower than Hangelan when it comes to here because he passed quite higher technically it's more out here and more out there but we would have to keep going back and forth like this if we were trying to look and go okay where is the increases decreases you know which one performed more than others and that's where you can actually do a comparison instead of looking at just one player. So how you do that is because we've now run two sets of data. So we save those under the EH and the HK single player. So we've got those tables that look like this. And then all we want to do is join those two together. So we want to create an R bind and then put those two variables that we've created with those tables next to each other. So then they just append onto each other. And then we're just going to save that as a variable called data. And then then like the other parts here and as I mentioned earlier with the different types all we're going to be doing is again in our plot underscore pizza exactly the same and then data we're just pointing to the data here instead of the actual single player and then we're just changing type from single to comparison we're keeping the template the same the only thing that changes now is now we're using the comparison side of things so instead of where you've got the color possession attack and defense we just have your color compare which is going to be green so I think it's going to be green and 
and then have a white outline for Harry Kane. So Hangland's going to be green and Kane's going to be a white outline. And you need to put in what the actual player's name is. It needs to match what's on the link. So when you go into the table, it needs to match what the player's name is here, just without any additional accents to the name. And then you want to put in what season you want player one to look at and then season player two. Ideally, if you're going to do a comparison, it makes sense to actually do it for the same coverage. Otherwise, it'd be a bit misleading because if you're looking at one thing and then another thing's looking at another, it's different players it's comparing to, which won't give you a really true comparison. So in this case, we're still doing the last 365 days. So if we was to bind the data first and then run that comparison, we now have our comparison. So the green you see here is Hangland and then the white outline is Harry Kane. So you can see how the different performance has happened. So the majority of the areas is non-penalty goals. Harry Kane's had more. I believe that's probably more to do with his performance at Bayern Munich than when he was at Spurs because that, I think he had more penalty goals than Hangland last season. So that would say, I think that's more to do with him not scoring as many penalties, scoring quite a lot of goals in the Bundesliga. And then you've got other areas where he's down more, assists, still quite high. And then blocks interceptions tackles i think probably that's quite a lot that he did at tottenham i'm not sure how he's playing in germany at the moment if he's Kane's dropping as much into midfield as he did at Spurs. Even though they play a, the same type of role, being a forward and attacker, you can tell their different styles and how they play are very different in what they do more of. So now you know how to do a comparison and actually pull through a single player. What happens if you didn't want to just look at the last 365 days and you wanted to look at maybe just a season or something? Well, you can do that is if you go into one of the players, let's do Hangland here as an example, down the scouting period, if you scroll all the way down you can start to see it's doing different things it's showing you different seasons or different areas which you can filter the data by it's giving you percentile and the average per 90 minutes for that particular league so if you say you wanted to look at the premier league not this season but last season then all you would need to add in is 2022 2023 premier league instead of having this last 365 days that's how you do it and then because we're still using the same player data we can just run that in here and then all all we've done is just change the season compared to the others we just give it another name so we know what it relates to in this case i'm just calling it epl 22 underscore 23 and now we get to see the stats just for that season and then how many minutes were played compared to a forward and then if we wanted to be able to compare the same player so we're not comparing two different players but the same player and then also compared to how they performed last season and how they're performing this season instead of putting in the other player's name which in this case we had Harry Kane and we had the same seasons that we were looking at we're now going to be looking at England as player one and two and then we're going to look at seasons in the Premier League last season 2022 to 23 and then this season 23 to 24 and then if we run that we can see how the changes happen now the majority here are very similar but then touches are down slightly the amount of minutes are played are different because obviously we're only halfway through the season so you're gonna have half the amount of time spent and also he's had a few more injuries but you can see in different parts where he's not performing as well where say progressive passes really low at the moment that could be how Man City are playing might be how he's been asked to play he's been doing a lot more clearances and he's been doing more blocks he's been doing some tackle before it didn't seem like he was doing tackles so I don't know if it's more how there might be a change in play is it because where missing players have been especially in the midfield has he had to play a bit differently to be able to get the ball is he feeling frustrated so is he coming in more and then he's like causing he's doing more for the team than just being an out and out striker where actually if i think he focused on being an out and out striker he'd be performing better might be why he's not performing as well this season still performing well but not as great so this gives you a good idea of where a player isn't performing as well but also you need to take into account that if players have left the premier league or no longer there then they're not going to be part of this percentile so someone like harry kane is no longer part of this season in the premier Premier League so you could easily say oh as an attacker these would go up because you now don't have Harry Kane there doing it and there might be more players who are playing less like that so you know you always have to just take things with not so much a pinch of salt but just kind of just take that in mind when you're looking at the stats and what might be performing differently but it's an interesting way to kind of look at stuff and then we can look at Harry Kane in the same way so instead of using Hanglins we're going to use Harry Kane and now we're looking at him against Premier League and then currently in the Bundesliga and the things that jump out to you already here are the non-penalty goals so he's scoring more goals non-penalty related than he did these things that's 21 goals at the moment for Bayern Munich he's been 
been doing more assists, he's having total amount of shots, he's been doing a lot more interceptions, but that could be the particular league. Passes attempted is a lot lower, but then it could be how he's playing his position. I haven't actually kept track of how he's playing for Bayern Munich, but looking at this, I would say he's not dropping back into midfield as much as he did at Spurs, just based on what the information is there. And assists mainly because I think he's feeding people who are actually scoring, so he's probably being more forward as well. And that's why he's getting more assists. So now you've seen how you can compare different players, see them single, look over different parts of seasons or whatever sort of scouting period you want to look at. What happens if you wanted to not use what is the standard templates that have been picked for you already with like total shots, assists and everything. I want to be able to pick your own ones with your own custom template. The easiest way to do this is if you remember in the player's data, you have your scouting period, which gives you your different ones here. These are all the different statistics and these are the stack groups that they relate to. And you could technically go in and filter by each statistical group here. The quickest way to do this is to actually index the number of rows. So then you can just select whatever row number that is. Now you could look down here and go, this is row one, two, three, because it's all along here. But it's good to actually have a reference within the table that you can look at. So if we were to use Hangadon's one again, so we're using the EH underscore single underscore player, that particular one, we want to add a column called index and how you add a column is by doing a dollar sign and then whatever you want to call your new column you just pull it in in this case we're just going to call it index and this is going to overwrite the current table with that extra column and then you want to point to it and then do one colon n rows and then you put in whatever table it is you want to add that column to which is again we're using the eh underscore single underscore player one that will give you a count where it go one two three four five six and so on and so forth so if we was to run this i'll show you exactly what i mean and now as you can see we got our table but down here we have our count that's going up from one two three four five and you can see it all matches up with the numbers that we got here so if we was to scroll all the way down we can see this is row 76 and it does say 76 there and then all you want to do is understand which scouting period you want to work with so let's keep this simple and just stick with the one that's at the top which is the last 365 days and then we want to be able to just pick out some random stats that are in here so we don't have to use the ones that are in the standard one and how you do that is then we take the table and in square brackets we do a c which is then basically going to be saying we're going to pick whatever these row numbers are so we're going to pick row 16 19 22 26 33 38 41 44 and 45 all you have to do is just figure out which ones you want you don't have to use the exact same ones as these then you just put that in brackets after the c and then a comma for each one you want to include and then you just do another comma with a close bracket and that will filter by those particular rows. So if I was run this, as we can see, it's done 16, 19, 22, 26, 33, 38, 41, 44, and 45, which is what we wanted it. And that gives us goals, shots on target percentage, average shot distance, expected goals, pass completion percent, pass completion percent, short, medium, long, and the number of assists. And now we have this saved and all pointed into data one underscore EH. Go into our plot underscore pizza again. And then all you're doing is putting the data and then whatever the data is that you filtered to we have a single again but then the one thing we change is instead of template being outfilled we're changing that to custom because then that allows us to change it and then everything else is the same we're using the season because that's the one we're using because you've got to remember whatever you've got in here and you don't want to overlap going to be a bit of a mishmash you want them to match up the scouting period obviously you need to use later numbers if you want it to include in say the premier league for premier league players and so, on and so forth but then that will give you now a completely different look so if we were to run this we can now see we've only focused on ones that relate to possession and attack and if we go back in here we can see shooting and passing so there's no defense in there hence why there's no red so if you wanted to you could have exactly the same as the ones that were before and copy it just remove the defense side of it if you didn't want that included for someone who's say like a striker or alternatively if it's a defender you can then take out the attacking side of things unless there's certain ones like headed goals or something like that i think there was headed goals actually is there headed goals oh no we do we have aerials won aerials lost so technically you could include those instead of something else because that would be quite useful to know if you've got a defender and now you've played around and made the different plots that you would like to actually keep and show off you can actually save these as a png by simply installing a package called ggplot2 with a function in it that's called 
GG save and then that allows you to just save an image as a PNG and then resize it as you wish. Now at the moment this is not sized enough because we're cutting off what's actually there. If you wanted to extend that that's where you can do this information here. So first and foremost I already have ggplot2 installed so I'm just going to load in the library and now that's loaded in. This is what you call your image. So in this case we're just going to call it image.png and we put that within gg save. The background color I've used the same which is going to be the same color that's using the dark because this is technically the sizing you if it's going to push out a bit more this will now become dark as well when you actually show it as the image so you want it to match up but say if you wanted to do it white and your beam was white you would want to make the background white as well and then the width and the height all done in pixels because the units are the X. So if I was to run this, we can now see we have, this is not cut off, so it says compared to forwards, the other background's the same, and it's exactly the same chart. I'll move this along, we can see it's exactly the same chart, and it's saved as image.png. And it saves, in this case, where I have everything stored, which would be my documents folder. The wherever you're picking up as your main storage point, that is where it would save it to. But you can save it to any folder you wanted to. You'll just need to put in what your folder root is in front of image.png or whatever you want to call your PNG file. And this saving works for the last one you've actually run. But let's say you wanted to run something that you've done in the past. So let's say if we wanted to do the comparison for EH, all you do is add in after the image is the plot equals whatever one you've saved. So if we go for comp underscore pizza EH, which is this one here, which is the one where I did the comparison. So if we go back a few, this one, this is the one we'll, we'll want to print. Now, if I was to run this one again, just because I've got this one open, it won't run this one. It will run the original one that was this one here that we just exported. But like I say, you pick the one you want, and then you run it. So we go into here, run, open it up. You can see all the words now and that's all saved ready for you to issue how you please. So this is a great way for you to play around with some football analytics and if you want to learn more about using World Football R and other football analytics that you can do with it then check out this video over here where I go in depth on what you can do with World Football R and also other visualizations you can carry out. So with that in mind until next time.